Hey, hi, Guru fam. Hope you're doing well and studying is going great. In this video, you will learn how to optimize your learning from UWorld. We're going to be going through a systematic approach on how to review UWorld effectively. This was something that I personally struggled with throughout my USMLE journey, and I hope that this methodology helps you efficiently get through a UWorld block review. In this clip from my advanced test taking strategies course, you will learn how to leverage Notion in your URL block review and essentially create a database to organize all of the concepts. All in all, I am confident that this approach will help you improve your performance on the USMLE exam. And if you're interested in any of my courses, feel free to visit highguru.com. Without any further ado, let's get into the clip. Let's go through the stepwise approach to optimizing a question bank. Now, whenever we review a question bank during dedicated, during our module exams, we have these questions that come up. The challenges are, how do I even answer the question? Do I take notes? How do I balance content review in the day? I keep getting 45% on my UWorld blocks. I'm getting a 70% on my UWorld blocks, but I'm not passing NBMEs. It takes me way too long to review a whole block. How do I deal with narrow down to two? Do I use Anki? Go ahead and type in yes into the chat box if you felt one or more of these challenges. Another component when it comes to reviewing your UWorld is to make sure you're feeding your mind in an organized manner. If you do flashcards for a little, write on loose leaf paper for a little, you do annotation and first aid on King deck here, if you're reviewing UWorld in a haphazard manner, your output will be in an unorganized manner. Think about having a consistent approach for the various questions in UWorld. You will have an approach for incorrect questions, an approach to marked questions, and a approach to correct questions after you are done doing it. Again, we are in the reviewing stage. Feeding your mind in an organized manner allows for you to have output in an organized manner as well. And so as we introduce reviewing UWorld, let's go through three important concepts. Number one, review shortly after your mixed timed block is completed. I think one of the most inefficient methodologies of preparation is to do yesterday's QBank review today. When you get behind on blocks, it ends up being a downward spiral and you're unable to change the neuronal synapses that you made as you were doing the block. And especially with your incorrects, you may end up rereading if you review it on the following day. So what you want to do is you want to review shortly after you are done completing the block and that's going to be high yield. You also want to avoid reviewing yesterday's blocks today because you then end up rereading. You don't have the ability to change your neuroplasticity as much as reviewing it in a close amount of time from you doing it. And I also want you to stay time conscious. I typically like to set for my incorrects, especially a 75 to 90 minute timer. And I end up getting into a flow state where I have a systematic way of how I'm going to be reviewing UWorld and taking notes using UWorld. Please make sure that you go through your UWorld review in a time-based manner, because that will allow for you to combat Parkinson's law. What is Parkinson's law? That a task will expand to the time allotted for it. If you say, I'm gonna review UWorld, and you allot the whole damn day, well, guess what? You are going to spend the whole day. But you may have a higher likelihood of completing the block review if you set a time limit. So let's just say you submitted a mixed timed test mode block. If you just submitted a mixed time test mode block, you will see this in your dashboard. And what you want to do is you want to click the analysis button. Now, when you click the analysis button, you will want to take all of the blocks that you have and first review your incorrects, then review your marked, and then your corrects. 
And remember that when you're reviewing your marked, either your marked questions went into the incorrect pile or the marked questions went into the correct pile. But you first want to start with reviewing your questions and particularly the incorrect questions. So you hit the analysis view. And now in this block, you have your analysis view. You can see that I got a 75% on this block. And I want you to combat the mentality that a certain percentage in UWorld correlates with the three-digit score. There may be some underground Reddit posts on this, but in my opinion, I would just focus on just being better than your last block, being better than yesterday. Don't try to equate a certain percentage with the three-digit score. You also are going to look in this analysis view as to whether or not you changed from the correct to the incorrect or from the incorrect to the correct. And this helps you develop test-taking um, test identity, which is whether or not you're a changer or a stayer. If you are going to change from the incorrect to the correct, well, usually you should do that on your NBME exams. But if you are changing from the correct to the incorrect, well, maybe you should just stay on your initial gut and sit on your hands. Don't change, especially in your second review of the block. Another unique feature of this analysis view is that you can expand subject domains. So for example, in anatomy, I ended up having questions related to neuroanatomy, rheumatology, and cardiovascular. What you'll then do is you will then toggle and go and click on test results. Now, when you hit test results, what you want to do is you want to filter for only the incorrects because you're starting to review with your incorrects. And you will see all of the question IDs that you got incorrect. And so this is a bird's eye view of the incorrect filter. And we see that here are the subjects, the systems, the categories, the topics, the percent correct others had compared to you, as well as the time you spent on it as well. And so what your goal is, is you want to now isolate your fab five topics. These are the topics that you should start with. These are the topics that you should isolate and potentially take notes on. And now the question becomes, how do you isolate your fi fab five? Which questions do I need to take notes on? Well, this is my model on how to choose the fab five topics you are going to be taking notes on. If you're following me, go ahead and type in yes into the chat box. Are you following this discussion? Excellent. To recenter ourselves, we are going through how to review a URL block. And I'm giving you a bird's eye view. Before you start with number one, review, start making notes. Look at the analysis portion, percent correct. Look at whether you were a stayer or a changer in this block. And now in this view, we are going to isolate the fab five topics, which you need to review. So which topics should you choose to maybe write a note, those five top five topics. It are the, those are the topics that you maybe felt uncomfortable with. Maybe I felt uncomfortable with ischemic strokes and that's why I should isolate that as one of my fab five. Maybe I am going to choose the question that I ended up narrowing down to two and then picking the incorrect answer. Maybe. I'm going to isolate the topic in which majority of people were correct, but I ended up not getting that question correct. And then finally, maybe it is the one that I spent the most time on. And that's the one that is going to be my fab five for this block. So out of all your incorrects, if we look at this here, we notice that rheumatoid arthritis, hypoglycemia were things that I spent a lot of time on. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate was a tough question for many people. So was antiretroviral therapy. So these are going to be maybe the fab five that you are going to be isolating. 
So in this case, rheumatoid arthritis, hypoglycemia, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, and ischemic strokes, as well as antiretroviral therapy are going to be my fab five topics. One of the psychologies that I want to instill in your mind is that writing a note does not equate to long-term retention. In fact, sometimes note-taking is just your way of saying, oh, well, you can remember that later because I'm going to, quote unquote, write a note. I'm going to make a card. I'll review that later. And sometimes we are all guilty of this. We end up writing a note, but we never come back to it. And sometimes the argument that I end up getting is, Rahul, when I write it down, I remember it. And that may be true. Kinesthetic learning model may be true. However, one thing that I will caution you on, when it comes to the USMLE, you can agree with me that there is way too much content, so you can't write everything down. And number two, the content is coming at such a fast pace that it's hard for you to have that kinesthetic model as a sustainable model for your preparation, unless you have a lot of time. What I encourage you to do is use Notion as a second brain. And with your study template, which you will get, I want to go through this live demonstration on how I use Notion to optimize my review. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going through how I like to take notes for the USMLE and UWorld in particular using Notion. So this is your Notion template, which you will all receive. And what I want you to isolate is this UWorld Notes tab. Now, this UWorld Notes tab is where you are going to build a second brain, where you can put all of your QBank notes, all of your concept cards, the organ system, the discipline, and when you created it. I'm going to use the sample cell as an example. Whenever you open the concept card, you go here, concept card, and you hit open, and it'll say open as page, open it up. You will see this tab right here, which is a new question review. This is a template, which if you click on it, it will activate the questions within the template. And I would encourage you to take your Fab Five and first write down all the topics, similar to what I did here. Rheumatoid arthritis, hypoglycemia, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Again, you can write it down. And if you hit new question review, you are able to see the various methodical processes underneath the question itself. So whenever you are going to see this Fab Five, or whenever you're going to start the Fab Five, one of the things that I would do is tag the organ system that the Fab Five is going to be related to, as well as the discipline, whether it's anatomy, embryo, immunology, biochemistry. And what you will do for the Fab Five is go through the series of these questions. Again, you're trying to feed your mind in an organized way. So you will look at the educational objective, write that down, paraphrase, paraphrase the vignette, i.e. the vignette architecture, the three testable facts, and what your thoughts were in answering the question. So as you can see, for this question, we see the educational objective. Rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory condition which results from an immune response directed against autoantigens in the joints. CD4 positive T cells secrete cytokines that promote inflammation. B cells produce IgM to FC portion of IgG, aka rheumatoid factor that leads to joint destruction. What you want to do is you want to take the educational objective and you want to relate it to how the vignette itself is written. So you can see here that my paraphrase of the vignette is like a math equation. 45-year-old female plus joint pain, swelling, stiffness, plus physical exam showing swelling of PIP and MCP and serum studies are going to be what? Rheumatoid factor is the IgM to FC portion of IgG. Then what I'll do is I'll look at the large explanation, i.e. the body of the explanation. And what I'll do is write three testable facts. Okay, rheumatoid arthritis, this is how I'm going to recognize it. Bilateral pain, stiffness, and deformity. Rheumatoid factor positivity is going to be very important. And anti-CCP is another antibody that you can see in rheumatoid arthritis. 
Finally, what you'll do is you will then look at this last section, which is what were your thoughts when answering the question? This builds a test-taking identity. And that test-taking identity is going to involve you having that deliberate practice, that analysis. Okay, this was a lab value question because of rheumatoid factor. I really wasn't sure about this question at all. And it was because I didn't know the content behind rheumatoid factor, for example. You will do this for all of your Fab Five. And what you will recognize is before you know it, if you consistently do this over time, you can make a nice set of concept cards for each of your Fab Five incorrects as you keep doing. And what I like to do is I like to filter based on certain rules. So if you hit filter, you can add certain filters. And when you add a filter, you can add it as where organ system is cardiology and only your cardiology notes will come up. You may want to add another filter where you'll say where discipline is going to be pathology and only your pathology will show up. And again, you can deactivate these filters by just clicking X and deactivate these filters by clicking X. But the point here is to create these concept cards and be very finite with the concept cards that you're creating. Because the goal here is to not try to capture everything. It's capturing the salient points in a very time efficient manner. I just did a live demonstration and the key takeaways for the concept card of your Fab Five incorrects are going to be the educational objective, which is a salient learning point, paraphrasing the vignette, thinking like the test maker. How does the educational objective relate to the vignette? What are the three testable details? from the explanation and knowing your identity and developing your identity as a test taker. Why did you get that question wrong? What was your confidence level, et cetera? And so I do want to emphasize that the educational objective should be related to the vignette architecture. For example, the educational objective here is that a fat embolism should be strongly suspected in a patient with severe long bone and or pelvic fractures who develops acute onset neurological abnormalities, hypoxemia, and a petechial rash. So in that second box, the paraphrase of the vignette, I would put in the salient components that helps me describe the educational objective. In this case, it would be a 32-year-old male, status post-pelvic fracture with acute onset shortness of breath, tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypoxemia. And as you can see here, I ended up doing quantitative to qualitative tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypoxemia, and a petechial rash equals fat embolism. And you're getting different components from the HPI. You're getting components from the physical exam. You're also getting components from vital signs, labs, et cetera. And so the goal is for you to isolate and understand what topic is being tested from this question review. How do you even recognize fat embolism, i.e. the content, and the salient content which is tested from the vignette itself? In this case, they really want you to recognize fat embolism. And in the next slide, we'll talk about the stem, which is the histologic change. So I do want you to form a little bit of a triad as you go through the deep review of these Fab Five. And that is the triad of three things, the educational objective, the stem of the vignette, and the answer that is correct. So you notice here that in the educational objective, they put occlusion of the pulmonary microvessels by fat globules is an early histologic finding of this syndrome. The stem is the histologic change has most likely taken place in this patient's lung tissue, which of the following histologic changes has been taken place. So out of fat embolism, what they really, no matter what, want you to know are the histologic changes. And that is the fat microglobules. So not only is it the isolation of what they're testing and the recognition of fat embolism, but you need to form that triad that, man, they really, out of that concept, they want me to really know 
the histological changes in this question. So the triad that you need to form is the portion of the educational objective, which alludes to the correct answer. In this case, the fat globules is the Hurley histological finding. The stem, which is which of the following histologic changes, and then the correct answer, which is the fat microglobules. And so what we're going to be going through are the frequently asked questions. Number one, what about the incorrect answer choices? A is wrong because, D is wrong because, B is wrong because. And I would say that have the conviction that you will see that A is wrong because concept in an actual question. Maybe fat embolism, they were just talking about other causes of metabolic acidosis, for example, in answer choice C. Well, you will get metabolic acidosis in another vignette. Don't worry about it too much. The only time that I would review the incorrect answer choice is maybe during your fab five, but especially when you were down to two. When you were down to two, you really need to have that effort channeled between the correct answer and what you were down to. The reason why and the, the kind of mindset that you need to put is that you want to separate concepts. I was thinking that A or D was the right answer, but I couldn't tell the difference, i.e. there was 50 shades of gray. And as I go deeper and deeper into the explanation, into the systematic approach, I now know that A and D are totally different. And that's where I would read D is wrong because. So what I want you to recognize is that this approach will take practice and you will have that rate of learning increase exponentially if you continue to employ this model step-by-step. Step. All right, I made my notion table. When do I even review it now? You can add this as a time-based goal in your study day. A time-based goal is something like saying, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes on reviewing my notion table from seven to 7.30. You can also filter it by organ system especially when your day is going to be set up as questions during the morning, content in the evening, and the content may be organ system specific. For example, you're spending about three days on respiratory. Well, maybe one of the time-based goals in the afternoon is to filter the table by respiratory and only do the respiratory concept card review. You can also do a space repetition model in which you can filter by created time. So you can say every morning when I wake up at 6.30 a.m., from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., I'm going to review the prior day's concept cards because one of the columns that you have in your table is created time. So I'm just going to review yesterday's cards. Another hesitation. What about the other questions? I feel like I'm missing something. What about my other incorrects? You told me the Fab Five. Well, number one, have the conviction that you are being time-based and you will see those concepts again, maybe in a focus question bank, maybe in your incorrect pass, maybe you will see them in your reset pass. And the other component, especially for your corrects, is that if you're trying to make notes on everything, you may be focusing on areas that you already know. The classic example here is how many chambers does a heart have? Four. Well, yeah, you know that fact now. You know that fact on Prometric Test Day. Stop focusing and making notes on the things that you already know. And then finally, with this I'm missing something mentality, is that you can do this exercise mentally. And you want to do this exercise mentally for your non-Fab 5 because your goal is to feed your mind in an organized manner. So maybe you don't need to type everything out. You do it for the Fab Five and the remaining, you're just going through that same process, educational objective related to the vignette and how it's written, and then forming that triad between the educational objective answer, the correct answer, and the STEM. Another frequently asked question, how should I use first aid? Should I annotate? And with this methodology, I would say stay within UWorld. There's already so much juice in UWorld for you to know. And what you should do is then you should take the Fab Five 
and you should correlate rather than annotate. You may localize the area on first aid where it is being tested and then use a highlighter system that, oh, ischemic stroke, this is the component that they were testing and it's right in first aid. And then finally, what you want to do when you're correlating with first aid is you want to build a visual spatial pictorial memory. You wanna say ischemic stroke as a question that I already have emotion plus content in a memory, ischemic stroke is found here in first aid. Man, I can visualize that page. And then finally, I would really recommend you to stay within UWorld when you're reviewing it. Too often do I see students who get a question on the urea cycle as one of their fab five incorrects or incorrects in general. And they say, oh, I'm gonna go watch a video on it. Oh, I need to look at Anki cards on it. Oh, oh, oh. And you spend the whole day rabbit holing and you think you're being integrative, but the person next to you is able to stay within UWorld and increase the amounts of concepts that they're going through and increase the amount of questions that they're going to. Any other questions that you have throughout this discussion? please email me, rahul at highguru.com. I'd be happy to get back to you or even hop on a Zoom call to help address your concerns. We went through how to review a UWorld block, specifically incorrects in this video, but I would encourage you to also watch my YouTube video on how to use Notion to review an NBME. It's similar, but slightly different. And I hope that you spend some time going through this video as well. A key psychology that I want to conclude with here is that the best approach is the one that works for you. The best approach is the one that is going to give you the most clarity. The best approach is the one that is going to be an approach that you're consistent at. All right. Thanks so much for sticking till the end of the video. I hope you garnered a few pearls along the way. Check out the description. I did create a Notion template similar to the one that you saw in the video. Feel free to duplicate it and start using for your QBank review. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or comment below. Thanks so much for being part of the HiGuru family. Stay consistent. We got this together.